Welcome back to Fermenter Fest 2020 for our final segment of what's been an amazing epic weekend of fermented fun. I'm really grateful to all our hosts for sh sharing our knowledge. I'm really, really sorry about that echo. We're really excited about this next talk. Um, having been a new father and looking in ways of how to introduce rich probiotic food into my daughter's diet. Um, yeah, I think this is a fantastic opportunity for all of us to learn a bit of something. Um, we are joined by Miller's Meals uh, author, award-winning author, Catherine Barnhorn. We will be talking about something very dear to me, a um, challenge to parents globally, fermented food and their benefits and how to introduce them into your kids' diets. As a certified integrative nutritional health coach, Catherine has incredible insights and practical application of fermented foods, benefits and how to integrate them into ours and our children's diets. Welcome, Catherine. It's an honor to have you as part of Fermented Fest 2020. Great book. I'm very excited to start trying these recipes from this huge resource of a book that you've created, Miller's Meals. Hi, Mary. Thanks so much. And hello to everyone else. Welcome to my kitchen. <laughs> it's looking very neat and tidy for you all. Doesn't always look like this. Um, okay, can I just jump in there, Mary? Yeah. Tell, tell us about uh, feeding our gut and introducing it to our kids' diets. Okay, perfect. So what I'm going to be talking about today is actually a presentation I normally do with a big screen behind me. So it's a PowerPoint presentation. But I said to Mary, instead of having slides, um, on here today i'm just gonna i printed it out um because people need to see people so um at the end of the talk um i'm happy to email this uh powerpoint presentation <clears throat> as a pdf to you uh just let mary know i think if you sign up to his mailing list on his website then i'll be able to send it to you before i jump in i mean mary did introduce me but my name is catherine and i'm an integrated nutrition health coach and i wrote the book, Mila's Meals. Mila is my daughter. Uh, she's now eight years old, and she's what I like to call a discerning eater, but most people will call it picky eating or fussy eating. So fermented foods in her diet, she, she's there, and she's got her hands on her hips now because she heard me say that. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so fermented foods, getting them into her diet and her to eat them, um, I have to be sneaky and clever. Um, but we'll get more into that later. I wanted to start, this is actually the, the cover of the presentation. So it starts with who are you feeding? So whether it's feeding yourself or feeding your children, are you feeding them or are you feeding who lives in them? Um, and this is because the human body is made up, okay, they, the scientists keep changing these numbers a little bit, but um, currently, what they're saying is that the human body is made up of 10 trillion human cells and 100 trillion bacteria. So you are more bacteria than you are human. So when you're feeding yourself, you should really consider feeding the bacteria that are living in you. And also, um, often we, we know about bacteria, we know the term probiotics. And I find it fascinating that the meaning of the word probiotics, it comes from Greek, Greek and Latin, and pro means for, and biotics means life. So probiotics really are for life. And also, I wanted to touch base on why it is so important to feed your gut, the name of this talk, or more specifically, to feed what is living in your gut. So to really be mindful of it. And there are three main reasons why it's important to really nourish uh, your microbiome. One is your immune system, so that relates to your physical health. Number two is emotional and mental health and well-being. And the third is detoxification, which in modern society, with all our pollutants, um, it's really important to be mindful of how you are detoxing yourself. So looking at the immune system, you may have heard this mentioned as well, that it's estimated that 70 to 80% of your immune system lives in your gut. If you feed it poorly, your gut will be left with few defenses, easily overwhelmed by bad bacteria and wide open to disease. 
And there are three little subsections on why they say um, 80% of your immune system is in your gut. And the first is because of the immune cells that line your colon. Um, and the, the micro or the, the bacteria actually talk to these immune cells. So they're in conversation the whole time. Um, the bacteria are informing the immune cells on, on what needs to happen. Do they need to trigger an immune response or not? Second thing is digestion. So oftentimes people think when they're eating that the food gets digested by the stomach. Um, and the digest, digestive tract is, I mean, it starts from the mouth and ends right at the end. It's not just the stomach. The stomach is more like a coffee grinder, just like smashes the food down a little bit and then passes it onto the colon. And it's really in the colon where your food starts being digested. And it's not really the colon doing it. It is the bacteria that live in your colon. So they break, the bacteria breaks the nutrients down into absorbable compounds that are then absorbed uh, through the lining of the colon and into the, into the bloodstream. But the bacteria, not only do they digest or break down, or like really digest and break down the food that you've eaten, but they also create nutrients. So for example, a cabbage. A cabbage is a really good source of vitamin K1. And we know vitamin K1, it's the blood clotting vitamin. But when cabbage is digested by bacteria, either by fermenting it or in your system, if you've got the right bacteria in, in your gut, the, the bacteria converts that vitamin K1 to vitamin K2. And if you've never heard of vitamin K2, I really suggest you go and Google it. Um, it is a really, really important nutrient that is only kind of now um, being spoken about. Uh, but for example, vitamin D, you need vitamin K to, to synthesize and um, utilize vitamin D. So oftentimes people are deficient in vitamin D, but maybe in fact it's the vitamin K2 that they're deficient in because they don't eat fermented foods. Another reason um, that the microbiome affects the immune system is the bacteria are actually defenders themselves they will take on opportunistic bacteria and pathogens themselves. The second reason to be mindful of feeding your gut is mental and emotional or behavior. And this really, for adults, uh, maybe, and unfortunately these days, teenagers as well, anxiety and depression is a, is a really huge issue. And they're linking that back to disrupted gut microbiome. But in younger children, in say toddlers and young children, they call it the terrible twos. Um, but there's a lot of research going on in, into, is it really the terrible twos or is it, and, and ADD, for example, or is it the disrupted gut microbiome? So recent research found that mood, curiosity, sociability, impulsi impulsivity, and in boys, extroversion, we're linked to more genetically diverse bacterial species. So they are scientifically proving the link between what's going on in the gut and what seems to be happening up here. And if you want to know more about that, it's, it's fascinating. You can Google the gut-brain connection. And then detoxification. I was just speaking to Mari about BPA um, before we came live online. <clears throat> so... In, in the modern world that we're living in, there's a huge toxic burden that we are dealing with. From BPA in plastic bottles or in the lining of cans, um, to pesticides, which I'm sure you're all aware of, to heavy metals, to food preservatives, to environmental pollution. There's, there's a huge toxic burden or toxic load for the, the body to process. And the thing that is going to help you to detox or to process and, and to eliminate these toxins from your body is in fact the bacteria. These microorganisms break down highly toxic man-made chemicals which your body is either incapable of or only partially capable of defending itself from. So that's another really, really good reason to get these probiotics into your little one's bodies and into your own. So 
I mean, this is a fermented festival, so I assume the people that are coming online know that you get these probiotics from fermented foods. But if you're coming um, via my channels, via the Mila's Meals channels, then many of you probably know that you get probiotics from a health shop in a little bottle. But really, the most beneficial place to get them from is from naturally cultured and fermented foods. So in my book, which is really big and heavy, I have a section on cultured and fermented foods. And I'm just going to read um, a little bit from there, just as an introduction to these foods. So what are cultured foods? Cultured foods are created when a microbial starter has been used to initiate fermentation. For example, whey, scobies, kefir grains, and powdered starter cultures. Kefir, kombucha, yogurt, and cheese are examples of cultured food. <clears throat> the starters are symbiotic colonies of yeast and bacteria that feed on sugars, thereby producing cultured food or beverage containing beneficial yeast and bacteria. And what are fermented foods? Fermented foods are foods that have been through a process of lacto-fermentation in which naturally occurring bacteria feed on the sugar and starch in the food, creating lactic acid. The process preserves the food and creates beneficial enzymes, B vitamins, omega-3 fatty acids, and various strains of probiotics. Fermented foods balance your gut bacteria and stomach acids. They release enzymes to help ease and improve digestion and make it easier for your body to extract and absorb more nutrients from the foods you eat. They are powerful detoxifiers, helping to break down and eliminate heavy metals and other toxins from your body. Besides a diet completely lacking in good bacteria, thanks to pasteurization, the balance of good and bad bacteria in the gut can be disrupted by the use of antibiotics, vaccinations, excessive alcohol use, excessive sugar intake, stress, diseases, and toxins. All of these allow harmful bacteria to thrive. To rebalance the scales, good bacteria or probiotics are needed to repopulate the gut. Homemade fermented and cultured food provides billions of beneficial bacteria, far more than any supplement can, and at a fraction of the cost. They are also a potent source of vitamin K2, the health benefits and healing powers of which are now being discovered. Introducing fermented and cultured foods to your little one not only reinforces the concept of that food can be your medicine, but also introduces a new taste profile to their palate, as these foods are sour. It is important to broaden your little one's range of taste beyond that of sweet and salty. And this, on the opposite page, that's my niece, Lily, and she will eat sauerkraut straight out of a jar, happily. My Mila, not so much. And that's why you might be saying as well that you're right, like my kid's going to eat that. So no, my kid does not eat sauerkraut out of a jar, and I say does not eat it because she does get it into her body, she just doesn't know. And I'm glad she's gone to her bedroom now, so she can't hear me say that. <laughs> okay, so when I was writing the book, uh, Mila was two years old, and actually how I came to know about fermented foods and sauerkraut, um, my sister-in-law, Lily, my niece's mom, was diagnosed with colon cancer. Uh, she was 34 years old. And the nutritionist that came on board to help um, advise us on what she should be eating said, she's got to eat sauerkraut, she's got to eat sauerkraut, she's got to eat sauerkraut. And at that time, I didn't even know what it was. I thought it was some kind of German food that you ate with um, the German hot dogs. Um, so we started making sauerkraut, and this was back in 2016. And I'll never forget Sarah, my sister-in-law, she said, why is this stuff not available in the shops? This is medicine. Everyone should have, have access to it. And so I actually started my own fermented uh, food line called Mila's Munchies because at that time I was living in Nysa and there wasn't, you couldn't find fermented foods in the shops. And I also, I agreed with Sarah, it's like people need this stuff. And so we started with sauerkraut. Um, at the same time, I was writing, writing my book and obviously feeding Mila. And I was like, she's not going to eat the sauerkraut. So then I discovered fermented carrots. And so there's this recipe in my book. It's called dilly carrots. And carrots are often one of the first foods um, for babies that are starting on solids um, because they're slightly sweet as well. 
And the wonderful thing about fermenting carrots is that they go soft. So it's like an infant can't eat a raw carrot. It's, it's too hard and they don't have teeth yet. But once you ferment them, they go soft and they pre-digest it. It's kind of like cooking them, but way more beneficial. And what I love about this recipe is it adds in garlic and dill as well, which have got their own unique health benefits. Then I thought, well, if you can ferment those sweet things, you should be able to ferment fruit. So I've got this recipe in my book bubbling berries, um, and these are wonderful. But again, once you ferment, you're gonna get that sour flavor, and um, Mila's, she's not gonna happily eat those. So everything that I want her to eat, that she doesn't want to eat, either goes into a juice, a fresh veggie juice that I make in the morning, so you can easily sneak some sauerkraut into them, they won't know, or into a smoothie everything now goes into a smoothie um, and just on a note about those smoothies oftentimes parents say to me um, their children don't like smoothies and in the beginning Mila didn't like smoothies either because she's texture sensitive as well so you can make the smoothie and I still do every morning I put it through a sieve just to get those bits out because often it's the bits it's not so much the flavor of the smoothie it's more the te texture so you get the bits out and if they still don't want to drink a smoothie like that, you can freeze it into an ice lolly. And um, the probiotics will, will maintain their integrity even if you freeze them into an ice lolly. And then this one I'm particularly proud of is the fermented applesauce. So again, applesauce is often a first food for babies. And I was like, well, let's ferment it. And this works really well. And again, you don't have to give them a jar of fermented applesauce to eat. You can add it into some yogurt, put it in the smoothie if the kids are old and, and drinking or eating smoothies. Um, and then I've spoken about the sauerkraut. Also in my book is recipes for milk kefir and water kefir. Again, they're really, really easy to hide into things. So for the kefir, I, I make uh, ice cream out of from coconut milk. Uh, let me find. So there's a recipe in my book as well. Four different flavors of ice cream. Um, and if you add kefir to that, it, the ice cream starts tasting like frozen yogurt. And it's absolutely delicious. And of course, you can make your own yogurt. Um, kids love yogurt. So you can make your own yogurt, again, from coconut milk. And you can flavor it with fruit. So if they want strawberry yogurt, you just take yogurt, put it in a blender and blend in some strawberries. If it needs to be a bit sweeter, then add in some, some honey if your kids are older than one years old, of course. Otherwise, maybe for syrup. So there are ways to get your kids to eat um, fermented foods, even with the sour flavor. I just want to check my notes here. So yeah, the sauerkraut, um, if, if you've got a, a young baby that's still about to start their journey with solid food. Um, Donna Gates of the Body Ecology uh, book and diet recommends that you start giving the babies that taste of sauerkraut, just the juice. You dip your finger into the jar of sauerkraut and then like stick it in your baby's mouth so that they can taste that flavor profile of the sauerkraut juice. And they're gonna pull a face, so have the camera ready because it's it's you know it's like oh it's that kind of flavor, and you just keep giving that to them so that they they become used to their flavor profile. Often children are just they either like salty food or they like sweet food. Those are the easy ones, you know. And you've really got to keep introducing the sour flavor profile of fermented foods. Then another way that um, Mila gets gets the good stuff in is obviously she's a fan of bread. We are gluten free, um, so I, I have gluten free bread. Or every now and then we have sourdough because obviously once the the bread is fermented by fermentation into sourdough, that's broken down some of the gluten. So oftentimes people with gluten intolerance, <clears throat> obviously not celiacs, but with gluten intolerance, sourdough is more um they don't react so badly as they would to a plain loaf of wheat bread so for mila again at her cousin's house she they gave her marmite and toast one day and she came home very excited about marmite marmite and bottle are now like the best thing ever so um being a sneaky mama i still give her marmite on toast sourdough with thick layer of grass sprayed butter on it 
and then what looks like Marmite, but actually it's this Misu paste. Really, it's like it tastes exactly like Marmite on toast. So there are really ways that you can sneak the stuff into them. But if your kids are older and they're used to seeing the Marmite or the bottle jar, um, I say this with various things, like if they're used to seeing the all gold bottle of tomato sauce, you've got to be really sneaky and when they're not looking, then you take the misu, okay, you empty out the bottle or use an old jar, and you put this into the jar. So when they see you making the toast, they, they're not alerted to the fact that something different is going on. Um, then, of course, the winner for kids, Mila's, the only fizzy drink she's ever had is sparkling water or kombucha. So this is mine at the moment. It's what I'm drinking now. The hemp for the anxiety of being live on YouTube. Um, but Mila's favorite is the buhu. She really loves that. And so it's a naturally fizzy drink. It's excellent. And um, you're, feeding, you're feeding the gut. So that's getting the fermented foods in. But what is really important and which sometimes uh, people are not aware of or not mindful of is that the bacteria or the probiotics are living, breathing organisms. So that means and implies that they need to eat as well. So what these organisms eat are the prebiotics, right? The prebiotics are the food for these probiotics or bacteria that you've now put into your body. So a definition of prebiotics by Dr. Amy Nett. Prebiotics are indigestible carbohydrates or at least indigestible to us. They reach the colon intact and selectively feed many strains of beneficial bacteria. Prebiotics are generally classified into three different types. Non-starch polysaccharides, such as inulin, soluble fiber, including, including psyllium husk and pectin, and resistant starch. Each of these types of prebiotics feeds different species of gut bacteria, but among these, resistant starch is emerging as uniquely beneficial. And that brings up a really important point. Before, you'll see I've set up my, my kitchen there. I'm going to take you through all those products. These are all prebiotics, right? So I'm going to take you through all of those because it's really important to include in, in your diet and in your little one's diets. Um, gosh, I had a thought. Hold on, reverse. Oh, yes, the different species. And, and that, that is also a concern with, with supplements. If you're supplementing with probiotic capsules or probiotic liquid, you need a, a diversity of this bacteria. Um, they're now finding all the different strains of bacteria have different roles to play. So if you're just taking a probiotic supplement, um, the diversification is going to be really limited. So it's really, it's so much better to get these probiotics from the source, from fermented foods and a range of fermented foods, and then obviously feed, feed yourself these different prebiotics so that you're growing these, these different varieties of bacteria. Okay, so soluble fiber, and this is really, this is what's easy to feed the kids if you look at this. The list of soluble fiber foods is cacao, raw cacao. So Mila had some of this for breakfast. It's shame, I don't have the logo on there. It's Galen's Decadence Chocolate. Um, it's dairy-free, gluten-free, and refined sugar-free. It's made with honey and raw cacao. So raw cacao is a prebiotic. It's feeding the bacteria in your gut. So it's a really good reason to eat chocolate. I've got quite a few recipes um, using raw cacao in my book. Um, and this... So I use soaring free superfoods cacao. And it's also really, really easy to make your own chocolates. And uh, you just keep them in the freezer. And then if your kid asks for chocolate, say, sure, there, have some chocolate. You're feeding the good guys. Another source of soluble fiber is seaweed and algae. So this is also something that is, like, very scarce in the Western, Western diet, which um, it's making a bit of a comeback now. It's coming to our attention now. But obviously in the East, seaweed is eaten regularly every single day. And it's a wonderful source of prebiotics. And so I've got these. And again, 
these all go into a smoothie. So, and obviously, so Mila's like, she's a little food detective, right? <laughs> she, she's not a very um, adventurous eater by choice. But I add all of these into a smoothie in the morning with blueberries because blueberries turn everything purple, right? Because for some reason, some kids are just born not wanting to eat green food. So I put all of these in her smoothie and then you add in a cup of blueberries and it's purple. And she's quite happy to eat purple food. Um, and then this is more soluble fiber, chia seeds and flax seeds, which I've got in a jar here. So you'll know when you soak chia seeds and flax seeds in water, it forms like a little gel-like substance. Um, and that's, that's really, really good food for your microbiome. And then psyllium husk. Psyllium husk. This is some psyllium husk. And it's also, this is really useful in gluten-free baking. It helps um, because of it, the gluten is what makes um, baked goods spongy and stick together. And in gluten-free baking, if you add psyllium husk, it, it mimics that. And at the same time, it's a prebiotic, so it's feeding the good guys. Um, and then also baobab. Wait. Here's baobab powder, again, from storing free superfoods. And this is also really, really high in vitamin C and also in calcium. So if you're on a dairy-free way of eating, this is a really good way to get your calcium in. And actually, so, so are the seaweeds. So you're doing many things in one go by eating these foods. And then pectin. Pectin is a soluble fiber, which is really, really, really beneficial for your gut. Also for um, infants or young kids that are just starting to eat solids, Oftentimes they struggle with constipation because of the change that needs to happen in the gut flora and pectin is really soothing um, on the digestive system and, and will help them with that. So that is one type of prebiotic. Um, the other one is inulin, which um, may be a new word to some of you. Inulin is a non-digestible prebiotic, it, which allows it to pass through humans' small and large intestines unabsorbed. During this process, inulin naturally ferments. Fermentation of inulin in the large bile stimulates bacteria to grow, which causes significant positive changes in the composition of the gut microflora and significant decreases in the number of potentially harmful yeasts, parasites, and bacterial species living in the body that trigger inflammation. So what, let me just clear my space here a little bit. So sources of inulin are chicory root, Jerusalem artichoke, dandelion greens, garlic, onion, and leeks. Those are the top listed um, sources of inulin. Garlic and onions, even for young kids, is really quite easy to get into them. Um, if you saute them, if you saute onions, they actually end up being really sweet. So you think of onions as being burny and not something you want to feed to kids, but if you saute them, it brings out the sweetness in them. And again, for the garlic, you do the same. You saute it and you can hide it in all sorts of things. One of Mila's constant foods, I mean, she eats it about three, four times a week, is pesto, uh, pesto pasta. So I make our own pesto because, again, I'm just adding, like, extra good stuff in there, like hemp seeds. But also I add in a lot of garlic. And luckily she's grown, grown up uh, really liking garlic. Dandelion greens. All right, so dandelions are those weeds that they use Roundup to kill and get rid of, okay? Which is really unfortunate. A, that they're using Roundup, and B, that they're getting rid of dandelions. Dandelions, are re they're a superfood, okay? They're really high in vitamin C and calcium, and they're a really good source of inulin, so they, they feed the, the bacteria. So while you could go um, scout, um, not scavenging. <laughs> what is it um, when you go around picking your own food from nature? I wouldn't Orange. advise picking up a uh, dandelion from the side of the road because it's probably been sprayed. Hi, Mary, you're popping on there. Foraging. Thank you. <laughs> scavenging. <laughs> yeah, no, we can scavenge as well if you want. But yes, foraging, much more positive sounding word. Um, so don't go digging dandelion out of the side of the road or public parks or anything like that because it's probably like sitting with a lot of Roundup on it. Um, but if they do grow in your garden, don't dig them out, you know. Well, do dig them out, 
but then add them into smoothies. Dandelion greens are really good in salads. But if you can't find them like that, I, I get dandelion tea. Um, all right, so tea is medicine. I've got a huge herbal tea range. Dandelion is really, really good for detoxing the liver. So this is obviously organic and safe to consume. So once you've made the tea from the dandelion leaves, uh, you strain the tea and drink the tea and then use those leaves and again, put them in the smoothie, right? Everything goes in the smoothie. And then resistant starch. So this one, this one's, I'm glad it's one of the most beneficial prebiotics because it's also one of the easiest ones to use with kids. Um, just a little introduction. When beneficial bacteria feed on resistant starch, they produce short-chain short fatty acids such as butyrate, which helps to increase metabolism, decrease inflammation, and improve stress resistance. So where do you find um, this resistant starch? There are three types. You can get them from grains, seeds, and legumes. You can get them from raw potatoes and green bananas, both of which are not going to be so nice to eat. Um, and then the third type, which is the one that is that I find most useful, is cooked and cooled starchy foods. So, for example, cooked and cooled parboiled rice, cooked and cooled potatoes, and cooked and cooled properly prepared. So by that I mean soaked and sprouted legumes. So in this, that's why I've got a pile of potatoes behind me to remember to talk about them. Potatoes, um, cook them, cool them down and make a potato salad, right? And in that potato salad, you can use your, you can make fermented mayonnaise, really easy to make, and gherkins with your own pickled gherkins. So they've got the probiotics and then the, the cold potatoes are the prebiotics. It's, that is like a microbiome feast. Um, also, you can do rice salads, bean salads, None of this Mila will eat. <laughs> it's, like, it's not even an option. So my shortcut, not really a shortcut, right? It's actually, it's a, it's a complete trick. But you get potato starch. So the, it's not, it's different to potato flour. Okay, they've isolated the starch out of the, the whole potato. And this gets added to the smoothies. And this potato starch is really fascinating. They're finding that it doesn't raise insulin levels either so for uh diabetics who who can't eat starchy foods um they find that they can have the the potato starch it doesn't raise insulin levels and it's feeding the the good bacteria thank you and i've got a whole put it in a smoothie put everything in a smoothie and um okay some of these are a bit weird tasting so i use blueberry to change the color so it's purple and then I use dates for sweetness and also um, cooked and cooled sweet potato adds sweetness because I mean kids love sweet stuff, right? So th there's so much you can hide in a smoothie. I hope Mila can't hear me, but I even put eggshells in a smoothie because um, she's slightly deficient in calcium and egg eggshells are the best place to get calcium from. So that is, I just wanna make sure I've covered the food side of things. Yes, I think so. Um, but I want to make special mention of something that is like totally stress-free because feeding your kids and getting your kids to eat the right food and even for yourself sometimes, maybe you like time and busyness. There's feeding your gut microbiome, but then they're discovering, and maybe you've heard of it already, there's also the skin microbiome, there's the lung microbiome, um, and there's the oral microbiome, right? So it's just the bacteria isn't just in your gut. And there's a whole movement um, starting at the moment by started by Dr. Zach Bush. And if you don't know of Dr. Zach Bush, I urge you after my talk, please go and Google him and watch any YouTube clip you can find of his. He is He's an incredible human being, <laughs> and um, especially at this time with, uh, with everything we're going through, with the global pandemic, he is a voice of light and a voice of reason, and um, he will bring a lot of joy and hope into your life. And his, he's, he's on a big mission 
trying to educate people to breathe their bio. Um, uh, and what he means by that is simply by breathing air, right? There are microbes in the air. That's how fermentation happens in your home if you're busy fermenting, that the microbes are in the air. They're in nature, they're in the soil. So you really, one of the best things you can do for your overall health and your gut health is to, is to get outside, right? Uh, take a deep breath of fresh air, right? Without a mask on, <laughs> okay? Just either get into your garden or go for a walk on the mountain or on the beach where no one can see you and take your mask off and breathe in deeply. And, and for your little ones as well, they've got to get outside. They've got to communicate with the microbes that are out there. Um, you need... They have to get out of the house. All right. All the goodness and all the health um, to feed our biome is, is happening out there. And then get dirty, right? Which is the complete opposite of what we've been told at the moment is to sterilize and sanitize and clean and wash. But, I mean, get, get healthy dirty, right? In a veggie garden, uh, on the beach. Like, let your kids really get in there. And even the young ones, when they're doing their tummy time, don't do it on a sterilized floor on a blanket inside. Put them on the grass outside. That is where their microbiome is starting. It is being seeded when they are so young. Um, to the point where when people have got really devastated gut microbiomes, um, they, one of the recommendations is that that person goes back to the garden they grew up in as an infant and eats some of the soil from that garden because that is their, their original microbiome. And to start seeding it from the beginning again is to go to their original home and their original environment. So yeah, get a little dirty, start, get them veggie gardening, get them, get them onto the beach, get them to walk in the mountain barefoot if possible, and to touch the plants. Like Mila and I go walking up the mountain and we just, we're touching the plants and then we, we like kind of, plant washing ourselves as we're walking. Our friends think we're a little bit crazy, but I'm, I'm okay with that. <laughs> um, breath of fresh air. Um, I just want to read this note I make here. We might be able to repopulate certain kinds of bacteria in our guts by just getting some fresh air. About a, about a third of our gut microbiome, microbiome is made up of spore-forming bacteria that slough off and persist in the soil for hundreds of years. When we breathe and swallow air containing these ancient bacterial spores, they can repopulate our guts. And then I made a note there, just as relevant to this, you know, 2020, is yes, to clean. All right, clean, wash your hands with soap and water and clean your house and clean your surfaces, but clean, don't sterilize. Um, I understand everyone wants to avoid certain nasty germs and viruses, but by sterilizing, you are wiping out the good bacteria as well, which will actually help you fight off flus and, and viruses that are around. Um, but when lockdown was announced, I did three things, which I... Okay, again, some people thought I was crazy, but the first thing I did was I sprayed my whole garden with EM pro probiotics. Okay, I like, and I imagined I was putting this invisible, like magic cloak over my whole environment. Because I thought if we're going to be housebound, if we're not out and about in the world, then I'm going to make sure that my home environment is so jam packed full of this bacteria. So the whole garden and all my indoor plants got sprayed top to bottom in EM probiotics for the garden. And um, then inside my house, I started cleaning with products that actually have bacteria and enzymes in them. So the bacteria and enzymes are cleaning, but then again, if there's residue of the, these cleaning products on the floor, I'm totally fine with that because then we, we're still feeding and we're still communicating. Our, our internal microbiome has still got someone to communicate with in, in our home environment. Um, I thought it was the third thing, the strange thing I did. Lockdown. Oh, and I went and bought four jars of sauerkraut. You know when everyone was stockpiling uh, toilet paper? Yeah, I stockpiled sauerkraut. <laughs> so, on that note, and, and at these crazy times that we're living in, 
I want you to please be mindful of the fact that stress is devastating for the microbiome. So you can be eating all these superfoods and, and you can be taking all your supplements, but if you are stressed and you're not releasing that stress, um, it's kind of, it's a catch-22 situation. So that is the end of my talk. I just want to say that um, my book is available again, the second edition, and Murray has got a discount code for you if you want to purchase the book with 100 Rand off. Also, I'm available for coaching sessions again, which I do via Zoom. You can book those on my website. And also, I've got a whole range of other talks that I do. Um, so if anything today that I've mentioned has sparked off uh, something, a subject you want to know more about, then please get in touch with me. And then maybe I'll arrange one of these fancy things that Marie has done. Okay. Thank you very much. Fantastic presentation. Thank you so much, Catherine. Um, really, really excited to start um, hiding fermented products into, into my daughter's smoothies. Yeah, no, you um, got to get smoothie. <laughs> I don't know about the eggshells, though. How do you crush those up? <laughs> okay, so um, she has boiled eggs for dinner. And um, so you have to cook the eggs, right? Because you need to, you, after I've said don't sterilize, but you do want to sterilize an eggshell, okay? So I steam them so they sterile. She has a boiled egg for dinner, and I dry the eggshell overnight. And then you put it in a coffee grinder, and you grind it up into a fine powder. Okay, put it in the blender. So these products that you've been showing us um, uh, from behind you on the shelves, uh, where's yeah. the best place to find these kind of products? All right, so the, these Trasandi superfoods, these seaweeds and algae, which I really advise everyone should be just like really eat these every day. And um, they are imported by Floraforce, which um, I'm, I'm not sure if you know Floraforce products. They've got a huge product range. So you can go to the Flora Force website, but also Wellness Warehouse has them, Facebook to Nature has them. Soaring Free Superfoods, best place to get them is from the Soaring Free Superfoods website. Um, they run specials often. They've also got an amazing series of talks happening every Wednesday night, and then you get discounts on their products as well. But otherwise, you again, Wellness Warehouse, Facebook to Nature. Phytoforce, you can buy directly. And why I'm saying buy directly, um, just as a small business owner, uh, all these products, they're also small businesses. If you buy directly from the business, they it's more beneficial, right, to those businesses. They make more of a, a profit. Often uh, our profit margins, when you go through um, stores like Wellness Warehouse or Facebook to Nature or anywhere else, um, the profit margins to the actual creators of the, the product is really, really small. So yeah, Fighter Force, you can order directly from their website as well. And this is New Echo, these cleaning products go directly to their website. <laughs> and yeah, what else? These I get from the farm village in Newark or wherever I can find them. Mm -hmm. And I also want to say to people, right, when you go to restaurants, um, when the world is spinning in the right direction again, um, and they don't, and they've got the kiddies menu, which is like slop chips and chicken nuggets and Coca-Cola or Fanta. Ask restaurant owners to, to stock things like kombucha. Really motivate for them to up, up their offering for kids' foods, you know? Because um, then kids can have a fizzy drink at a restaurant without drinking Coca-Cola and Fanta. <laughs> So your, your your book, Catherine, has won um, an astronomical amount of awards, including Gorman's Best in the World Award. Tell us about um, that accolade that you've picked up. Yeah, goodness, that was that came by surprise. All right, so this book, um, I self-published this book. Okay, which means I wrote it and designed it and did and printed it myself. Um, and at the time, I wasn't qualified as a health coach. The reason I studied to be a health coach was I thought the, the book um, would have not have more value, but um, would be taken more seriously if it wasn't just written by a mom. <laughs> so that's why I studied to be a health coach. Um, and then I thought the book would have more credibility if it had an award sticker on it. Because it's like when I go buy wine, I don't know wines. I just I look for the one with the gold sticker on and I think, okay, someone thought that was good. <laughs> so I entered um, 
aim to quite a few international book awards um, because I just wanted one sticker for the cover of my book. And anyway, like then I won eight awards. So that was unexpected. And now there's not enough space on the cover <laughs> for all the award stickers. So um, in the second edition, you'll see all the awards are listed on, on the front page there. But um, yeah, the first award I won was a Gourmand. Um, uh, so the Gourmand World Cookbooks Awards, they're also affiliated with the Paris Cookbook Fair. Um, it was first awarded, they run it by countries. It's kind of like the Olympics of, uh, of cookbooks or, or in the food world. And um, you get chosen as, an, I was chosen as a national winner in South Africa um, in the self-published category. And then all the national winners uh, go to the Gourmand Best in the World Awards, which was held in China. So off I went to China, it was very exciting. And um, there it received a Best in the World Award um, in the first book category, because it's my first book. And then this year was the 25 year anniversary of the Gourmand World Cookbook Awards. And I got an email out of the blue from uh, Edward Contro, who's the founder of the awards, saying that they had chosen um, the, the best of the best in the world from the past 25 years. From, so from 1995 to 1990, 1992, oh, work it out, 25 years ago from 2020. <laughs> And um, anyway, in Miller's Meals had been selected as one of the best it, of the best in the world um, wow. in the diet category. So yeah, so Mila and I were scheduled to fly off to Paris in June this year, but unfortunately that got cancelled. Um, but yeah, so pretty soon, um, as soon as uh, international careers and things are working, then I'll have another sticker to put on the book. And is this book available worldwide? Um, not at the moment. The first edition is available on Amazon, um, but I'm busy approaching international publishers to sell my publishing rights to make it available, the second edition available internationally. Chris, without doing too much research, I, I think this book is, you know, very unique. I've not, not heard of something, um, you know, the story is authentic. You're a mom that was creating recipes for your, for your daughter. And you've created a whole recipe book of 100 recipes with beautiful pictures. So um, I think it would do very well overseas. And, you know, this is going to benefit everybody. Yeah, well, thank you. Hold thumbs for me and say praise or do blessings or whatever magic everyone out there has. Because I, I sent it off to some international publishers last week, actually. Yeah. So, yeah. I, so. Think, I think that would be silly not to take it up. So Thank you. <laughs> So thank you very much again for your time. It's been awesome to meet you, um, e meet you. We haven't met in the flesh yet. Um, yeah. And your and thank you for the book. It's I'm really looking forward to trying uh, these things out. Um, 100 recipes going to keep me busy for a while. Oh, uh, Holden, you asked earlier which recipe you should start with. You know mm -hmm. which? Okay, it's not fermented. Let me see if I can quickly find oh, they it. Not, they it's not it. Right, and now that we know that chocolate is like really good for you. Where is it here? Just go, you've got to look at this. It's made with coconut oil and raw cacao. Oh, wow. And you can yeah, put yeah. your superfoods in there as well. You won't taste them or see them. Neither will your child. It's amazing. It's the okay. bomb. I will go with that first. I'll, see okay. you I'll post them on the, the community site and we can talk about it there. Thank you for also talking uh, about you know the importance of, of fermented food. I think it's a great way to round up um, this fermented fest and a pa uh, more practical applications of, you know, fermentation and how to in, uh, introduce it to your diet. So I'm very grateful for that. And we wish you all the best. And thank you for the offer of uh, your recipe for sauerkraut, which we'll be um, adding to our recipe book for the Fermented Fest, uh, which you can get when you sign up to be a patron this weekend. Uh, we've had some people sign up again today. So thank you very much. Your funds are going towards making us a sustainable platform. Uh, yeah, that sauerkraut recipe. I'm looking forward to trying that too. That's in this book, right? The sauerkraut's in the book, but I'm yeah. assuming actually the gherkin recipe because okay. that's good for kids. Yeah, cool. gherkins on hamburgers. When I you've got a, you've, you've done a very nice video of you actually making the sauerkraut. Is that available on your website? Um, I just actually posted that for the first time. It's on Instagram at the moment and YouTube. No, it will be on my website, but you can find it on my Instagram page. Great. 
we didn't have many questions, um, but we have had um, uh, comments of affirmation adulation. So that's why by Zion Khan, who was our keynote speaker. She says, thank you, Catherine, for the talk and for the discount. And fantastic. I also want to tell people they must go back and watch the talks if they if they haven't yet, because they're still up, right? The recordings. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, no, they, they, you can see the numbers going up and up and up. So people are watching it um, retrospectively, which is great, because now this is a resource for people to go back to. So it will be on. Uh, yeah, in Zion's talk, how she was talking about the ancient, the, the spores that are out there, right? And that have hmm. been through the trauma and things. It was, it was, I was like, yes, <laughs> that, you know? <laughs> yeah. No, it's inspiring. And then yeah, Anya, who uh, spoke to us about Koji, is saying thank you. And then Mike, who's one of our regular viewers, who makes awesome beer, said great talks. Thanks. He's also got uh, kids. So I'm sure he'll be looking to hide fermentations into his kids' food as well. Catherine, thank you very much. Really great. Thank you so much, Murray. Thank you. And best of luck to you as well. Thank you. You've done a great job. I'm looking forward to see um, how the book uh, sells overseas. Thank you so much. Sunday. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Guys, that's a wrap. I meant to say 2020 is done. Um, it's been an epic weekend. Um, really, really grateful to all the hosts and put some time and effort into sharing their knowledge with everybody. It really puts it our philosophy of collective learning. And for those who have become patrons and for those that might still become, um, we've got to the end of the season to make that pledge and help us build a platform where we can spread the knowledge and give you the fermentation. Uh, just to let you know if you would like um, to sign up, and we have to, like I said, to the end of today. I'm just going to share my screen with you uh, to show you where you can sign up in the name of the There we go. That's our uh, Patreon site. It's patreon.com slash commented. You can access the site via commented.co.za as well. You go and click on support us. That's the site. There's three tiers. Each of those tiers has value adds. Uh, for this fermented festival, you will be getting a recipe book from all the recipes from the hosts, as well as all those discounts that we've been talking about um, for workshops, for products, and for events. So yeah, look forward to welcoming you to the community. Um, until next time, uh, do keep an eye out on our future events. We have more Meet the Bakers coming up, which is a charity drive uh, to raise funds for Isabella Charity. And we're looking forward to doing real live events um, soon, um, where we'll be doing, obviously, wine versus beer, cheese pairings, and other five course pairings. Until next time, and thank you very much for all your support. Um, go out and happy fermenting. Goodbye. <laughs>